It is rear wheel drive You're shit drinking box. a can of Solo while your mate's doing a that's burnout. That's shit. Reminds me smells of like burnouts. Commodores. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to a, another week of wine for the people, the blind tasting segment. I think by now you probably get the gist of how these play out, but a little bit of a difference. Uh, this week we reached out to the lovely guys out at Sometimes Always, uh, an amazing online retailer who sponsored the wines for this week. So they all these wines will actually be linked uh, in the description below. We don't know what they are. We literally just... Uh, uh, told them to charge us and kind of send out some wines. Uh, the only person who knows anything about them is Lockie. He's behind the camera. Uh, but uh, let's just dive straight in. We're back. More wines, more tastings, more terrible opinions. Let's get straight into it. God damn wine in us. And this is brown. <laughs> the color of this though, look at that. I'm not sure what to call this, whether it's like orange or like, it, there is definitely like a sunburnt brown thing going on. It's confusing as hell. Yeah, literally that tastes, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's quite a high alcohol wine because some of the um, fortifiers or other wines that I've tried in the past have been in a similar way. It smells really nice. It's got this like really bright citrusy, like bergamot, burnt orange. Yeah, this is this is really really delicious. It's like brewed tea, really like if you go to like Southern America and you order an iced tea with like at a like a Nashville barbecue joint, you get brisket, you get coleslaw, you get the bread, you get the wings and all that kind of thing, and you get an iced tea. This is that. Something like this, I would be willing to part with probably thirty bucks a bottle for. Um, and I would drink quite frequently. This, these are the styles of wine that I'm really into at the moment, um, especially as Australia leads into winter. These are the white wines that I'll tend to gravitate towards, these really sort of rich, textural, oily uh, styles of wine that are very aromatic. This is a real thrilling drink. Moving on to wine number two, which is a complete contrast to wine number one. This is crystal clear, brilliant. It has. Um, you know, wonderful green highlights, and there's a hint of uh, a gaseous nature to it. Uh, in terms of just, you know, the colour in that, it looks clear, it looks like somewhat well hydrated piss, which is what you're looking for in a white wine, as far as I understand it. Chardonnay! Looks more like a classic white wine to me. That last one, obviously very orange, very amber. This looks like the white wine that I've been served throughout my childhood, starting at 18. This almost is textural like a Chardonnay without a lot of the Chardonnay characters. Um, and if it is Chardonnay, it's very unique. Oh man, this is one of those wines that smells better than a taste, I reckon. Probably because this is a bit room temp, I'd like this a little bit colder. I thought it was gonna be a lot rougher than it is, and that's a good thing that it's not as rough as I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna have that real like tart, sort of acidic wine taste to it. Yeah, I'd like a bit more. But still, I'd, I'd pay 40 bucks for that. I'd grab a bottle or two. First red wine in the lineup. Um, this is already looking pretty interesting. Yeah, it's got that Slovenian oak blueberry thing with this like really nice, you can smell the kind of furry tannin. Fuck it, I'm gonna have a stab. I reckon this is Shiraz just off the nose. How about that, Lockie? What are you gonna say about it? Nothing, because you're not allowed to, because that's how we set these videos up. This is a really cool wine, uh, and I haven't even tasted it yet. This smells like classical winemaking that's done with a very, what we call a deft hand. It's, it's one of those things in winemaking, I think, where you really uh, are tempted to try to extract every ounce of flavor out of grape variety, and that is not a good idea. You don't want to do that sometimes, probably most of the time. This here is showing that little deft hand, someone's restrained themselves to be able to find sort of little ounces of beauty, and, and it just jumps out of the glass in that sort of sense. But it's really delicate, but tightly wound, but pulls a lot of punches. It's This is a really, really well-made Australian Nebbiolo. This is, uh, this is a wine that I would buy with gusto, and it's to my own personal taste. I like these almost dusty, quasi-rustic uh, Italian-esque uh, varieties. 
had a good, if, it was, if this was payday and I tried this, I'd be like, I want to try this in, you know, tonight, give it to a friend, try it in a couple of years, try it in a few more years, and then a couple down the line. It's really tasty. You know what, I reckon, the things that I've found is that when it's a big red, and it doesn't taste like a big red, it's generally a little bit cheaper. So I'm going to suggest that this is actually a $30 bottle of wine. And I'll buy half a dozen. I'm not afraid to say it, I'll have half a dozen of that wine. Fourth up. This one, contentious, probably a red. Also, it could be a very alarming piss. Don't say that. Now, the question with this one is, is it orange wine or rosé? It's got this coppery hue. It could be an orange wine or it could be a rosé. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated. It, it's showing a little bit of cloudiness. So, I'm gonna say that this is maybe a bit of a hands-off producer or someone that's just let this rosé settle naturally. I love this kind of wine. It's bready, funky, acidic, but delicious and I want to drink so much of this. This is really fun. Uh, this is wrong. This is the wrong opinion to have. This smells like tomato sauce. <laughs> this smells like tomato sauce. I don't know what to tell you. And it's a little bit uh, a little bit funky on the nose. It's, there's a lifted, um, uh, and it's gonna sound terrible. It's not actually terrible. There's a lifted vinegar type aromatic. It's what we call um, uh, volatile acidity. Not a bad thing in measured amounts. And this has this kind of cool, fun little funk. I don't know if it's orange wine or rosé. I really can't pick. It's like, it straddles that line really delicately. How much am I gonna pay for this? I am gonna pay 35 bucks a bottle and I'm gonna get two bottles of it. First one, I'm gonna drink by myself and be like, huh, this go well with Tim Sims. Second bottle, I'm gonna flex on people and just be like, you wanna try a wine that tastes like tomato sauce? They're the only two reasons. This is a delicious wine. This is a wine for your gut. This I would drink. Again, this is another dozen example where I would buy a dozen leave them in the fridge, crack them out with monotonous regularity um, and really same. This is, uh, I'm into it. Uh, we're back again to a more traditional white wine looking thing. Um, See, it, so this is the same grape variety. This, this, for me, this feels like Chardonnay Shard of fucking nay. Like this is like a this is a complete level up. Ooh, and we've got a little bit of just throwing wine around, man. Kinky. I'm gonna give it to you straight. This is fucking delicious. I don't know if I'm allowed to, I'm still not convinced I'm allowed to swear in here, so I'm gonna say this is bloody delicious. That's a great wine. Um I reckon this probably sits around a hundred bucks. Great mouthfeel, amazing texture, amazing length. This is this is a really this is a really good wine. White wine can't charge that much for it. It's a seventy dollar bottle of white wine, and I'm not going to get a bottle of it. That said, if we find out later it's cheaper, absolutely grab some. But for now, I'm going to let people with. Uh, higher tax brackets than me buy this one. Big fan. Uh, would I buy a ton of it? I'd buy personally probably about six of them. Um, and I'd be willing to, I'll be expecting uh, to pay probably around about 40 bucks a bottle uh, for something like this. Welcome back. All right, we have uh, obviously tasted through these things. We have uh, wines number one, two, three, four, and five. So we want to, let's lift the let's, lid. Let's lift the lid. Let's what what the lid. have we what got? Because, what is the wine? Firstly, what would you be willing to part with for that? I'm happy to pay 50 bucks for a wine of that quality, of that style. Like, it's very hard to get a wine of in that style, of that quality, without too many faults that is that delicious. I think on like thinking about it, 30 bucks bottle of wine, I'd be very happy to buy a bottle of that for 30 bucks. That said, I'm much cheaper than Noah, so keep that firmly in mind. I was I was on I was on with you though. I was on about 30 bucks and I'd be stoked because this is a really interesting wine. Very thrilling drink, my kind of drink. What do we got, Lockie? What what is it? 80 bucks. I beg your fucking pardon. <laughs> it's eighty dollars. It's eighty bucks. What is this? I've never seen this before. Okay. I mean, it's the, delicious. The label is amazing. It's like it's the taste of Yonye. Yonye. I was thinking like like aromatic grape variety. 
you said Ocotropic, which is a Mistel that we make, which is a Gewurz base. We all said Gewurz as well. That's something. Uh, right. French Wine Centre, so our mate Jono brings us into Australia. To be face fair, to eight, face. Yeah, to be fair, 80 bucks isn't a ridiculous price point. If you look at this wine, like on the shelf, it's like it's a Skinzy Viognier from France. Yeah. All right, wine number two. We have gone complete opposite end of the spectrum. We're into lean, mean territory with a textural edge. 47 bucks, 50 bucks, no one's on the money. And is it? Oh! oh! Yeah. Damn! Yeah. How is that not Chardonnay? It's Treviano, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Which is ridiculous because I put my stamp Fuck. of approval on well that being done. Chardonnay. So it's a, That's a, gangster. A, a, te a textual Italian white variety. I shouldn't have doubted myself. Yeah, but shouldn't but have doubted myself. You smell that and you think fucking Chablis. Yeah, Just I know, I know. A little bit of behind the scenes knowledge here. Uh, yeah. The yeah. winemaker of Unico Zello, Laura Carter, is here. And her reaction when that bottle got revealed is the most expressive I have ever seen. <laughs> the CEO of the business. It was as if Italy had just won the World Cup and she was in Florence. It was ridiculous. <laughs> right, moving on and upwards into our, our only red of the lineup, right in the middle. Guys, what did you think? Really I, nice. I smell this wine, I think of Unico Zello. This is like, yeah. not, not the wines you guys yeah. make, the wines you guys drink. <laughs> no, seriously, I was big on this wine. What do we got, Lockie? What, 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 I'm anxious to see this one, because I, I was big on this one. I'm, 50 was, bucks for me, I'm I was happy like, to pay 50 bucks for that. 50 bucks, and I thought New World. I and actually, it. Oh, what drink! Drink! What is this? What the fuck is this? 20 bucks? What is this? I don't know if I've never seen this in my life. You know Tinto Barocca. Tinto Barocca. Tinto Barocca. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, this wine. is red hot value. That's temperate G Grenache and Tempranillo. Yeah. This is a good wine. This it's is a, a good that's wine. Fire. That is, yeah. Yeah, that's that fire. is fire. Like, that is absolute fire. Get a case. Get, Get a, a case fucking of this. Case at of 20, that. at that. 20 bucks? 20 bucks. 20 dollars. All right. Was it rosé, this wine number four here? Rosé or orange wine? It's a rosé. It's a rosé. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Lock it in. Can I lock in Nebbiolo rosé? Okay. Uh, I'm going to lock in uh, Syrah rosé. Unfortunately, I'm not going to allow you to lock in Nebbiolo rosé. <laughs> what is it, Lockie? What is it, Lockie? I want to know what it is. 36, break. Oh, good. 36 bucks. What do we got? Is that pit now? That doesn't is that a, um, yes, it's a pit now. It's, um, uh, this would be Blair Frankish or Zweigelt. Is it a rosé? Natural rosé wine. Okay. Dry, contained. Yes. So, yeah. Sorry, is it Dog, Dogma. Rosé so, dogma. Austria, so, so close. Oh, this is... It. <laughs> Dude, I read this it. This is sick. Like, you this guys is sick. So, right. and what, so 30... 36 bucks. Mm. Good. Last wine off the lineup, and Lockie's really looking forward to editing all of this. Um, cool. uh, we have what I thought was the standout wine of the lineup a sleeper of a wine. Amazing balance. Bargain. Oh, bargain. That's yeah. Cheap. Yeah, bargain. What do we got? Aussie. No, New Zealander. Sauvignon Blanc. Wait, what the fuck? Dog Point. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. So dog, oh, yeah. What year is that? Yeah, so dog point are known for doing. So this is a Fumé Blanc style. So Fumé yeah. Blanc, which Fumé cool smoke. Style. I had an inkling when tasting this. I was like, then why didn't you I say anything? Yeah, why didn't you say something? I didn't say anything because I, I oh. didn't, I didn't want to say it was seven years old. Oh, listen to it. <laughs> Trust your gut. I know, I know, I know. And on, <laughs> on that note, guys, thank you so much for chiming in for another week of blind white tastings. An amazing erratic lineup, some really interesting surprises, and some amazing deals to be had. All wines linked below. And again, another massive thank you to Sometimes Always uh, for helping us with the wines. They made an amazing selection. Uh, guys, thank you so much. Brennan Carter, we have Henry, we have Noah, and we have Lockie as well. Uh, thank you so much. We'll catch you in a week. <laughs>